everyone thank you for tuning in on my channel so today i want to share with you things that i wish i knew before having my baby or things that people didn't tell me before having my baby basically things that i didn't realize will happen after having my baby so i hope this video is helpful and useful for you one way or another and if you want to know more then keep on watching so uh, before we get to the content of this video if you're new to my channel welcome my name is Amadea I am a mom of one 16 month old not 60 16 month old uh toddler girl oh my god she's a toddler now she's no longer a baby um and I had her during the crazy peak of pandemic last year in 2020 I gave birth to her when uh, when the world was basically upside down and it was a it was a crazy time and my parents well our parents me and my husband's parents uh, don't live near us my parents specifically they live in Indonesia and they planned to come here to be with us when when we were giving birth but obvious for obvious reason because of the the restriction on traveling and stuff and it wasn't safe they weren't here when I delivered my baby and it was heartbreaking. It was not only heartbreaking, but it was also scary, especially for me because it was a totally different um, kind of experience that I have, that I imagined when I first found out that I, I was pregnant. I had all this plan. I had all this expectation. I had all this um, basically things that I knew uh, that I planned would happen, but they just didn't happen. And I was so sad to, oh my God, I don't know what, what uh, okay, I need a minute. Okay, sorry, <laughs> I didn't know that this gonna happen, but it it's triggering. Turns out it's triggering for me. Um, I, I really wanted my mom to be there when I delivered my first child, her first um, grandchild in the family, first child in the family, and it didn't happen. And then, yeah, <laughs> that's that. So basically, things didn't happen. World turns crazy, which, but but my baby was still born and then she was she had a little bit of health problem and she was in the NICU for almost a week and we didn't have any family with us we have super we were super grateful for the uh, love of our friends who are here who support us but we didn't really have our family with us so we didn't really know what to do which led me to the first point which is that I can do it I could do it and even though my mom wasn't there my dad wasn't there we didn't have any family it was just the two of us me and my husband we could do it with by the grace of God that we could do it and it was a really really tough time it was a confusing time it was an overwhelming time that it turns out I could do it during the NICU days it was really hard and then when and then uh, when C finally came home with us, it was even harder. But turns out I could do it. I didn't have my mom with me. And we, we, we surpassed this, that we, we overcome it. And which is something that I'm very, very grateful to share with you. So if you're expecting, if you were like me, that you don't have any family with you, or even if you're doing it alone, know that you have the strength you have the ca capability and you can do it no matter what you can so the next thing i learned is to give time more to prepare myself mentally because I know I buy all of this stuff. I watch all these YouTube videos of what the things to buy. But I didn't really spend the time to really prepare myself mentally. So when my baby first came home with us, it was such 
a horrendous, um, not horrendous, I don't want to say it's a horrendous experience, it wasn't, but it was a very stressful for me. Because once he came home, I didn't really know what to do, honestly. I, there, I still remember the moment when C finally slept because I didn't know how to get her to sleep because she was in the NICU for five days. And I didn't know how to get her to sleep. When C finally slept, I cried because at that moment, I told my husband, I don't think I could do this. And I guess this is back to the first point, but turns out I could do it. But again, I need to, I wish that I would have prepared myself mentally more and, and all the nitty gritty stuff that I didn't realize that I had to do. It's not just about buying stuff. It's not just about diaper changing. It's not about just, I don't know, uh, clothes to wear or things like that. But it's also about how to, literally how to keep a child alive for 24 hours a day. Every milestone is precious. Like I had to, um, I had to take a break from social media. I had to take a break from Instagram because it really put me in this position where I compare my baby with somebody else's baby. I started comparing like, oh, she's already she's already this month old, but how come their baby could already like crawl and my baby cannot can barely see it up straight. And I had I just turned off social media and it was the best decision ever. I, why would I compare my baby? Because every baby is different. Like, I know that. I know that in my brain, in my head, I know that. But I, I just can't help myself. So what I did, I just turned off social media. And I just want to say this, that every milestone is precious. So no matter when they achieve it, no matter when they do it, it's still precious. And be, every baby, again, is different and they have their own timeline. What I didn't know that every baby has this kind of sensitive periods or leaps if you follow the Wonder Weeks. That's the app that I downloaded. Basically, this is just a long story short. It's an app basically telling you when the baby is having a leap or a, which during that leap period, usually the baby is more fussy because they are trying to overcome this certain milestone, that certain developmental area. So they're more fussy and the, the fussiness, probably they cannot fall asleep. They used to sleep uh, well, but then during this period, they, they're crying more, they're more, they're clingier, they can't fall asleep by themselves and all that kind of stuff. And I'm so, I didn't know about that before and I was I was super impatient. I was super I don't know. I was There was a day that I yelled at her because she won't stop crying. I yelled at a 2-month-old baby who doesn't know anything. Who's n it's not even her fault, but it's because I didn't prepare myself that I got mad at her and I felt bad immediately and I apologized to her even though she, he, she wasn't even aware what's going on. But know that there are these time periods for every baby that, that, that basically make them crankier than usual. I feel like throughout the past year, almost year and a half that I have learned about my baby, Emily, is that it was really challenging for me to feed her at first because it was all new, right? Her life is dependent on me. And I, was, I didn't really know how to feed her and she wasn't into self-feeding until she was 12 months old. And I've seen babies self-feed themselves, a, a whole baby led weaning, but she didn't even grab food to put in her mouth. We even saw a feeding therapies and all that stuff. And it also make, be, 
it was like a very pain point for me it was really stressful time for me because I didn't know every time I spoon uh, feed her she was gonna she was screaming she was angry she was mad and I realized that it's because I had this expectation for her to eat how much and it just makes me stress out and then one day I just have it I just had enough and I I tried to change my approach uh, ever since she started uh, feeding herself I think around 12 or 13 month old I changed my approach I just let her do her own thing during mealtime I didn't push her I didn't uh, basically I didn't push her push her on how much she eats on what to eat I just gave her options I gave her the opportunities during mealtime to eat whatever so C gets to decide so I provide C decide so that's basically my approach thanks to uh, feeding little thanks to feeding littles and uh, and it's it's work it works out so far and I'm really grateful I'm not obsessed well who, who am I kidding I'm still a mom I, I get stressed when she doesn't want to eat but not as much as I used to be so let's let let me just put it like that I think I will always be worried I will always be stressed that's just I feel like the nature of a mom and I just can't help myself but I'm not I'm not as stressed anymore because I let her I let her I, I let her decide on how much and what she wants to eat and it's it's working well so far and I'm grateful and I'm no longer obsessed on how much she weighs unless of course consult to your pediatrician if you have anything to worry about of course but other than that generally speaking I'm not really worried about it as long as uh, she, she continues to show that she is developing properly. I used to be a morning person before getting married, but for whatever reason, after getting married, it's really hard for me to wake up uh, in the morning. My theory is sleeping with someone else in your bed is just makes it that much comfortable and it's just making me sleep longer especially in the morning but what I found that um, after being a mom w waking up earlier is the key to fill my own cup first so that I can fill her, her cup if that makes sense I feel like I need to I need to take time in the morning for myself first before I can tend to her needs and it makes me more patient it makes me more appreciative of what the day is gonna bring I don't know if that makes sense but just but just um, disclaimer that I still find it really hard to wake up in the morning so it is just I take it day by day but that's what I find uh, starting the day earlier before the family it's ideal priorities change so this is the thing that I didn't realize I feel like before I had my baby I always thought I, I, I'm gonna be the same person that I was which which is true I'm still the same person but my priorities have changed uh, just evidently if you followed me for quite a while this channel before I used to upload a lot a bunch of luxury stuff luxury bags which I still enjoy and I still love but it's not really my main focus anymore just because my focus now is her and I love sharing my experience with her on, on social media and I hope that you find that that helpful for you too and I feel like as I, I evolve it's just things that my mom used to tell me that before uh, having me before having me and my sister she likes to shop for herself but after me and my sister she likes to shop more for her kids which I find it odd be at that time before Emily because I thought how could you enjoy buying stuff for somebody else uh, 
but now I find myself enjoying finding stuff for her to buy even more enjoyable than shopping for myself. Believe it or not, I haven't really spent that much money in the past two years to buy things for myself. It's, it's mostly for her, her toys, her meals, her clothes, and all that kind of stuff, which I, I'm enjoying right now, and I'm okay with that. And yeah, priorities change. This is the last, but definitely, definitely not least. And this probably might sound stupid. and But this is something that I just need someone to tell me so that I realize it's happening. Eventually, your baby will turn into toddler. Like, this is such a common sense, right? This is such a common sense. Everybody grows up. Every child grows up. Every baby, every baby will turn into a toddler. Like, I knew that. I had some kind of idea. But then when Emily turns into toddlerhood, I feel like I have to prepare myself all over again. I had to prepare my, my mentality, I have to prepare basically everything because I didn't know, like every stage of life, I have to start preparing myself mentally and yeah, so I hope this makes sense, I hope this uh, helped because toddlerhood and babyhood is a completely different territory, let me just tell you toddlerhood is just like crazy and i'm just in the early phase of toddlerhood and it's already making me like questioning my life not gonna lie but it's really fun i feel like this time around that i can interact with her more i can really see what she's doing when she's playing with her toys i really really love seeing her interacting with murphy and with other kids with her toys with her surroundings i just really like am learning about her every single day and she's developing every single day and she's growing every single day so i'm cherishing every single moment that i have with her and it's very very precious so that's all the things that i wish i knew before i have uh, my baby i hope this is helpful for you one way or another if you have any questions if you have any suggestions even leave it in the comment down below uh, connect with me on my social media instagram hey amadea by Amadea and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. -bye.